first day in office, we are going to cancel Barack Obama's deal with the Ayatollah in Iran. It is a dangerous deal. When I'm president, we're going to bring jobs back to America by embracing free enterprise. That means we're going to fix our tax code, we are going to reduce and put a hard cap on regulations, and we are going to produce more oil and more natural gas than this country has ever produced. That's, that's how we're going to bring jobs back to the United States. On the issue of Obamacare, every Republican running for president is against Obamacare. I am the only one running for president of the United States that has ever done anything about it. In 2009, Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, and Barack Obama cut a deal with the big insurance companies and created a taxpayer-funded bailout that was going to be in place to bail out insurance companies that lost money under Obama. Well, in 2014, I wiped out that bailout fund. And I saved the taxpayers over $2 billion in the process. Now, some believe that wiping out that bailout fund will lead to the collapse of Obamacare. I certainly hope so. But whether it does or doesn't, when I'm President of the United States, we are going to get rid of Obamacare once and for all. <laughs> Trey, a moment ago, Trey a moment ago mentioned immigration. There is no one running for President of the United States who understands immigration better than I do. Because both of my parents were immigrants. Because I was raised in a community of immigrants. I still live in a community of immigrants. Every one of my neighbors is either an immigrant or a first-generation person. And let me say this. As the son of immigrants, I know for a fact that enforcing our immigration laws is not anti-immigrant. We are a sovereign country. We have a right and an obligation to have immigration laws, and we have a right to enforce them. And when I'm president, we will. We're not going to have amnesty. When I'm president of the United States, I will cancel the President's Illegal Amnesty Act. I will take away funds from sanctuary cities. They're going to lose all of their federal funding. And we will deport dangerous criminals out of this country. But it's more than that. We're going to secure our border after 30 years of talking about it. And we know how to do it. 20,000 new border agents. Finish the 700 miles of fencing and walls. Put in place uh, in, in a, a system of at least $4 billion of new technology to identify when people are trying to cross the border in the first place. Put in place a mandatory e-verify system for employees. Put in place an entry-exit tracking system to prevent people from overstaying visas. If we do that, we will secure the border, and we will bring illegal immigration under control. Here's the other thing I understand about immigration. It is not the same issue it was two years ago, five years ago, maybe even one year ago. Immigration is no longer simply about whether someone is coming here looking for a job. Immigration is no longer simply about whether someone what we're going to do to win the next election. Immigration has become increasingly about national security because we know there are people in this country, we know there are people that are trying to use our immigration system, both legal and illegal, to get people into the United States to attack us. And so when I'm President of the United States, we will still be a compassionate and loving nation, but we will have a very simple criteria. If we are not 100% certain of who you are and why you are coming, you will not be allowed to enter the United States. Because in the 21st century, the threats we face are too extraordinary. And we must change with these new, re new threats that we now face. On national security in general, there are a lot of people running for president and they talk real tough about it. How we're going to bomb ISIS, carpet bomb ISIS. How the sands of the Middle East are going to glow in the dark. Well, you can't bomb carpet bomb ISIS. And you certainly can't make the sands of the Middle East glow in the dark if you don't have bombs and you don't have airplanes. And we are gutting our military, and for the life of me, I do not understand how it can be that there are some Republicans running for president that want to continue these dangerous defense cuts. National security is the reason why we have a federal government. Commander-in-chief is the most important obligation of the president. I can tell you, when I am president of the United States, we will stop these defense cuts, and we will rebuild our military, because the world is a safer and a better place when America is the strongest military power in the entire world.